We are back breaking down another one of your mm -hmm. dynasty teams. That's, That's right. right. Every team that we break down in this series has been submitted in our Discord. So check the link down below, that solo.to link. If you would like your team to be considered, send us a DM over there. But we are breaking down Pauly D27's team. And I'm really excited about this one because this is not the perfect team. No. This is a team that it almost feels like, and Pauly, I don't know where you are, but it almost feels like a team that you might take over if you were to, if you were to orphan a team. And it was, it was given to you and you were mm -hmm. like, okay, let's see, how can we kind of, how can we kind of redo this? And uh, you're going to see his team right now. We're going to go through the starters, the bench, capital, and along the way, we're going to talk about moves that we would potentially make, Badaki. Yeah. And I said this to you right before we recorded. I'm actually really excited about doing this one because to <laughs> yeah. me, when I see a team like this, it actually makes me excited to think about tearing it down. And there really is no way around this, mm -hmm. okay? It is time to tear it all down and restart, uh, in my opinion. And, and why? Firstly... I don't know if you agree with me. I assume that you do. This team is in no com no position to compete. No doubt. I agree. No competition, no position to compete. And also, there's no future. So we're not going to be computing, competing right now, mm -hmm. but we're also not, with this current squad, going to com be competing in the future. So let's go position by position, Badaki, and let's talk okay. about where our strengths, where our weaknesses are. For the quarterbacks, it's, it's I don't want to say worst case scenario, but it's pretty bad. I do believe the quarterback um, is probably the um, second there's weakest. There's weaknesses everywhere. <laughs> second weakness for sure. I mean, if you look at it, once again, on the screen, Big Ben, Matt Ryan, Taysom Hill, the only big foundational piece there is Trey Lance. Yeah. Um, Big Ben, I mean, is, big ben is retired. Yeah, he, he's he's not going to do a Tom Brady. No yeah. one's going to welcome him back with 100%. open arms. You can, you can let go of him at this point. Um Rudolph, it's it's obvious that he's never going to be a starter in the league. Mm -hmm. Matt Ryan, he's thirty six. How much how much longer does Matt Ryan have? Does exactly. he have any dynasty relevancy? I mean, there is talks of Matt Ryan maybe being traded if Deshaun right. does go to the Falcons. I mean, maybe by the time this video is out, we already know that answer. Right. But I, this is somebody. If there is somebody I am holding, it is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. I'm cutting Big Ben. I'm going to hold Taysom Hill just in case. Any. I mean, sorry. Um. Mason Rudolph, excuse me, just in case. Okay. And Taysom Hill, I'll probably just keep or trade potentially as well. So maybe I'm keeping all three of those guys just to see what yeah. happens. And then... So drop Big Ben. Let's keep these guys. Let's talk about that in mm -hmm. a second. I, I want to get to Trey Lance, but in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the running backs here. I mean, look, really, you if you don't see, you can see uh, down below in the injured reserve. We have CMC and we also have Joe Mixon. So these are your pillars, really. These are the pillars of your team. Mm -hmm. And to me, again, when I look at this team, these are the players that I'm going to start with when it comes to completely breaking it down and restarting. And I don't know where you sit on this, but I'm thinking we need a Sam Presti post-Russell Westbrook and PG-13 type rebuild. We need to <laughs> sell everything that we have yeah in order okay. to get more draft capital mm -hmm. do you do you see that the same way i yeah. feel like those are two pillars i would start with yeah absolutely i mean i did something like this with the team that i had in one of our follower leagues where i just sell, sold everything for picks now i have six or seven picks in the first round of 2022 and i think maybe this is what you can do you know you know you're not you're not going to compete this year you might not even compete next year and maybe you get those picks for the 2023 class or 2022 if you can sell them before the season starts before you know these uh, these rookie drafts start to happen, then maybe you can do something and get some pieces. And let me just say quickly on that. By the way, I, I agree. Like Joe Mixon, CMC, let's let's sell them. Let's see what we can get. Right mm -hmm. now, Joe Mixon's value is at an all time high. Correct. CMC, people still are choosing him in the third round of a startup. Sometimes second round of a startup. So there's definitely value here. These are mm -hmm. guys that you can get mm -hmm. a lot of pick compensation from. However. It might be harder to get. It sounds weird, but it might be harder to get twenty, twenty two, and twenty three picks. 100%. Don't be, don't be opposed to going and getting twenty four first rounders mm. in in twenty twenty four. This mm -hmm. team, it's not going to be in a position to compete in the next couple of years, right? So if you if you do need to go get twenty twenty four first rounders, that's okay. But for Joe, I'm thinking anywhere from the one hundred one this year to the one hundred three. I think you can do that. I think you can yeah. send that to a win now team. Um, or in any early first in 2023, get as much as you can. Target those win-now squads. And, and the same can be said for CMC. Just start stacking Agreed. up 
Agreed. those first round picks. Mm -hmm. And again, don't be like, even if someone's like, Hey man, our 2025 picks just came out. I'll send you, I'll send you, you know, a first, a second and <laughs> really whatever gonna, it looks like. You really like, ain't competing for the next couple of years. <laughs> it's going to take a long time, but it's exciting to me because I'm thinking, Oh man, like my team will look completely different. Right. Even in two months from now and mm -hmm. in three years from now. So um, those are the two guys I looked at and I said, okay, these, these guys are probably going to bring the most return in this rebuild. And I'm glad Correct. we're on the same page there, Badaki. Um, you know, outside of that, when you look at the running backs, Devin Singletary, maybe he, maybe he's someone that you could look at moving as well. Cause he doesn't fit your timeline. And now with JD McKissick on it's, you know, he, we thought, Oh, JD's coming in, but no, he's back. Yeah. At he's back now. Singletary's value kind of goes right back to where it was. You know, that upside. So I think of, it could be worth moving him mm -hmm. for future compensation as well Absolutely. because he's, he's not going to ever be in a position to help you with your current team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's and no think, other running backs really that the, I see the, here. The other guy I think that you could potentially sell probably during the season if he does stay with the same team as Cordell Patterson. If okay. he does re-sign with the Falcons and the thought process is that he's going to be utilized the same way, maybe you can sell him to a, to a win-now team in the middle of the season right when he gets, you know, 25-plus right. points game, whatever the case may be. Like, hey, Cordell Patterson is RB7, you know? Right. Take him right now. Give me a first or give me a high second, whatever the case may be. Or even I think, RB17, give me a mid-second rounder, you know? Exactly. I, I would do that. You know, like, try to sell him as high as possible. I think for Cordell Patterson... Cordero Patterson specifically, hold and wait and then sell. I think that's the best bet for him. Yeah, so let's look at the wide receiver core. So to me, it looks like your core was Keenan Allen, Michael Thomas, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. So I imagine that this was this team might have been drafted maybe two or three years ago. I, I, I can't say for sure based off of the roster. I'm just I'm trying to put pieces in my head. So right. for me, you know, this is an aging core, but let's use that to our, our advantage. I... I would say maybe you could hold Calvin Ridley because his value, in my opinion, is Agreed. higher next year than mm -hmm. it is this year. Mm -hmm. But Keenan Allen, uh, Michael Thomas, these are both guys. Again, we are we are the entire farm is going. So exactly, um, exactly. I mean, what do you think about that? I, I agree. The, I think there's two people that you can sell. I don't. I looking at all your wide receivers, AJ Green. There's no value. Devontae Parker. I feel like there's yeah, no value. No. The only two people I see value in is Keenan Allen and Michael Thomas. Keenan Allen. I think you can still you can get a first yeah. for sure for for Keenan Allen. There's no doubt about that. He's with a, a great quarterback. It's Michael Thomas. You know what's going to happen if Deshaun Watson does go to the Saints. You're kind of banking on that to happen, so you can sell Michael Thomas because then. There could be a revitalization of Michael Thomas because we're and maybe we, we're both maybe often. We, we are often. Maybe mm -hmm. we know that information by the time this is released. At the time we're recording, we don't know mm -hmm. if Deshaun Watson is going to be traded to New Orleans yet. Agreed. But that being said, maybe it is a good sign to hold Michael Thomas until because that seems like the most likely scenario that he does end up in New Orleans. But again, yeah, outside of these guys, there's there's no one that has proper value at this point. I think Curtis you know. Samuel. His value could get higher, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't move him. Um, you know, if you get good offers for guys like Parker and, and Green, yeah, move them. But I'm just, I don't think that that's going to happen for you, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I agree. You I think agree? Parker, you can definitely get something just depending on what they're going to move forward with him. I'm not sure if he's a, a free agent or if he still has a couple years on his contract. But um, right. if he does stay with the, the Dolphins and Tua, there could be a, a glimpse and in the game, if that happens throughout the season where, you know, he, right. he, he might buy, might maybe sell him in season. Yeah, sell him in season. But I think Green is like AJ Green is done and all those other guys are pretty much done moving forward. OK, so your tight ends, it's it's really just Hunter Henry. But I That's will say okay. that and Joku is quite interesting to me here because they just and, and Hunter it. Henry's it's not a bad tight end to have, but he doesn't no. fit this timeline. Agreed. But with Njoku, it's super interesting because if some way Deshaun ends up in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I think what's good is one of the players on your team is going to become more valuable soon, probably. 100%, unless he goes to Carolina. hundred percent. Another but thing I would is, hold in Joku until I find out that another, information. Another thing is if I'm not mistaken, the this just happened just overnight before we were recording this yes. video. Austin Hooper, Hooper, they're releasing Austin Hooper. Mm -hmm. So that is huge for David and Joku because now it was a finally, weird signing to begin with. Mm -hmm. But now finally he can be that tight end one there. He's mm. never had. I mean, he's had the opportunity before uh, they signed Austin Hooper, but he was always injured. There was always there was always something, right? 
Now, hopefully, yeah. he can be this guy. He was always great because of his speed and everything. So why not keep him? He's still young. He's still very yeah. young. Always, he's always been a super athletic guy. Just mm-hmm. the system has never helped him for fantasy. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it is worth holding on to him for this time period. You know, just making sure there's no other players that were miss game, missing. I think Chenault's a hold. I just don't see value, trade yeah, value in these other guys, including either. Everett. Another guy you maybe know. that could potentially be valued down the road if the scheme starts to fit is Curtis Samuel. If they if they start yeah. using Curtis Samuel the way they did in Carolina, you He's know, I think for sure. that was the expectation. Um, other than that, I think that's it. You know, that's yeah. really that's all you can do with this team. Make some yeah. room. Drop Devonta yeah. Freeman, maybe, you know, drop um, Malcolm Brown, you know. Uh, yeah, drop those guys, make some room, you know. Start start going crazy, totally. picking up people off of uh, waiver wires that could potentially be wide receiver too, or like Isaiah McKenzie, maybe that's available on your waiver wires, whatever the case may be. Maybe right. start picking them up and see what happens because they those guys can bring value. Agreed, agreed. So we're pretty much telling you to who you can sell at this point, who mm-hmm. you might want to hold because the value could get higher and mm-hmm. who's just not going to return value. Now, Agreed. in saying that, you can still put these players on the block. If you get literally anything for for the guys like specifically Malcolm Brown, Freeman, uh, Mason Rudolph in my eyes, Ty Johnson, you know, like if, if someone gives you something, don't, you know, don't say no. You don't have to hold if they give you something. So really, the only player on this team that I want to hold and I think we can agree here, is Trey Lance. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not even opposed to moving Trey Lance if you get, let's say, three first-round picks for him. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, let's just hold on to him because you're in a position where if he doesn't pan out to be the player that we think he can be, that's okay. That we, is we okay. Weren't, we weren't in a position to really compete, but um, you can hold on to him, and then if he does turn out to be this top five, top ten quarterback in the league and he does end up being successful in San Francisco – you have a pillar to build off. So to me, again, we are completely stripping down this team. We want to get a mountain, a treasure chest of draft picks in Lucky the future. Charms, 100%. And you know what would be the worst thing possible for this team is you holding exactly where you are and then winning a couple games next year and mm-hmm. your draft pick is in an even worse position. Yeah, um, I agree. So for me, it's like, Hey, let's 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 do what we have to do. It's unfortunate that you lost your your second in 2023, but let's look at the draft capital he has this year. He's got the 107, the 202. Those picks in particular for me, I'm going best player available. Yeah. If that's a quarterback, if that's George Pickens, if that's a Lave, you know, if that's if that's one of those wide receivers, I'm going best pick available at both of those Agreed. those those slots. And I don't think it's wrong to go quarterback because who knows mm-hmm. with your team, it's not like you need everything. You're pretty much the Houston Texans right now of a dynasty team. Yeah. Like everything is I a guess need right now. Maybe the biggest question I would, if I, you know, if I'm Paulie D and asking us for advice, maybe, I, maybe I am investing in a quarterback instead of maybe. You know, maybe if Pickens does fall to me, maybe I'm saying, you know what, I'm taking a chance on Pickens if he lands on a good spot over a Chris Olave because he saying needs Pickens to, or pick it, pick, pick it, Kenny pick it. Kenny okay, Pickett, Kenny. excuse me. Kenny so Pickett. maybe maybe you had to get a quarterback right. because this this quarterback room I think could, is one of the weakest. Then you can right. get a, a good wide receiver, a Sky Moore, a Jahan Dotson, whatever the case may That's be, in the second, and then right. and then you know kind of build your wide receiver room depending on, on right. that. Because without a quarterback next year, if none of these guys, if Taysom Hill doesn't play, Matt Ryan doesn't play, Mason Rudolph doesn't play, you don't have a quarterback. So then get a Pickett. And then yeah. maybe build on from there. But there's so many different ways you can build your team. You know, you can go best Agreed. available player. You can go quarterback and then go for the wide receiver. But it all depends on your league and what these people, you know, what your league values. Because Kenny, what I would, Kenny could be gone yeah. early. What I would say as well is I wouldn't be using a pick on a running back with 107 and 202 for you. Um, with the longevity of running backs and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with the talent that would be there, I wouldn't be using one of these first two picks in this year's draft on a running back. Maybe Agreed. I would use a shot in the third or fourth, depending on who's... But I just always think it's best player available. And I I would hope that in a month's time, you know, if you're able to make these moves, that capital section, that draft capital section would look completely different. I mean, Agreed. Where we want to have much more future mm-hmm. capital here. So... I guess again, it's it's sell it's sell the farm at this point. At the moment, if everything goes right, Mixon's a first, CMC's a first, at Keenan least. Allen's a first, 
Michael Thomas could be a first. You can you could potentially have four first round picks in the 2023, 2024 in the future, which which is good. It sets yeah. you up. So you can get at least three to four. You already have, you know, your 2023 first round pick. Or if you all if you do get all those first in 2022, then that's still okay, you know? So just And really I depends. I would say like I wouldn't I would think that you could get more than just four first. As 100%, well for those four 100%. Players, by the way. Agreed. I think you could you should definitely shoot higher for for that. Mm-hmm. And what you don't want to do is you don't just want to clarify you don't want to go to the team chat, the league chat, excuse me, and say, "All right, everyone's gone, everyone's up for sale." No, like let's do these let's do these trades individually. Go mm-hmm. target players because you're then letting everyone know that potentially they could get players at a discount. So I would say like let's target players individually. You're going to have to be super active, man. If you want to get this team turned around, you're going to have to be active in these trade talks, yeah. counters back and forth. Um, all right, so we're we're going to do a team grade, and I hate to be harsh, but again, mm-hmm. like I said, I really would – I am i don't hate being in this position. I love yeah. the thought of like rebuilding because then it's like I did this when we're in five years from now. But for me right now, as the team currently stands, I gave it a D-. It's, it's just – it's in a really, really bad place. Agreed. But – it's only up from here, and that excites me. What what team mm-hmm. grade did you give? Yeah, I gave him a D. I mean, you do have some good foundational pieces. Even if you don't move on from Mixon, you don't move on from Keenan Allen, you can still move some other people to try to get some value, you know. But it just really depends on on how, how you move forward with your team. It's all, it's all up to you now, honestly. Yeah, It's really all, all up, up to you. you. So this was re- I enjoyed doing this one. This felt like it was very much more hands on 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 what I would do. Right, one hundred percent. Comment down below if you if you're watching this, Polly, or if anyone else is watching this and say, mm, "Nah, we can compete." You know, let us know. I just I don't see that with this current roster. Mm. So comment your thoughts down below. Yo, what's good? What Thanks up? for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos, watch now, it. You can also subscribe right now if you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm-hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.